Rune magic. This is a practice that many pagans use today, especially Norse heathens such as myself when it comes to divination or any sort of magical work. In today's video, I'm going to share with all of you my rune casting method and why or why not I choose to read the runes the way that I do. everybody, hail and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings. This is your first time, welcome. My name is Jesse and I'm the host here on this channel. I upload new videos every week pertaining to Norse, heathenry, Germanic paganism, things that I tend to focus on specifically that are my, my interests, some other things that my subscribers and friends and followers here um, on the various social media platforms that I use will often suggest as well as some various series types videos that you can find all in the playlist section uh, down in the uh, description area of this video. And if it's stuff that you like and if you don't want to miss anything, please go ahead and click that subscribe button right down here and ding the bell for notifications so that way you don't miss anything whenever I upload new content. It's usually once a week. Uh, sometimes I may do a surprise live stream, you never know. Uh, but uh, that is what it is. Before we get started guys, let me call to attention, check out this this really awesome staff um, that I have here. That was a gift uh, from a friend of mine. Look at this. Isn't this awesome? I showed it in a picture um, picture post here on the channel, but I just wanted to call to attention how awesome this is. This is a gift from a, a local chieftain uh, of the area, and um, I think it's really awesome, and I wanted to call attention to to it real quick and say thank you very much uh, to my good friend. Uh, I'm not going to name names right now for certain reasons, but he knows who he is. Thank you so much. All right, so today's video I wanted to do, um, I kind of did something like this uh, a while ago. If you guys check out my uh, rune discussion series, I believe it's called the Nine Pieces of Eight or Nine Pieces of It <laughs> series. Um, I'm going to link a card up here for you guys. To, uh, to check that out if you want, where I kind of went into uh, the runes, specifically uh, three runes at a time during a nine episode series. And in the last uh, episode, I went and kind of showed you guys how I did like a rune casting or whatever. But I wanted to focus a little bit more on that today. Uh, that way you guys don't have to go searching through a list of videos. Uh, and just to kind of share with you all my rune casting method, what I do, how I read the runes, and why I may or may not do certain things that you may see as very popular uh, ideas or popular options of reading runes for divination, any sort of magical practices that you may incorporate in your own uh, pagan beliefs, whether they be you know, Norse, heathen, uh, or any other sort of Germanic uh, pagan practice. I know the runes are used quite a bit in not just the Norse heathen circles, um, I, I, I know a lot of eclectic pagans, um, some other uh, types of pagans who will use runes in their divinatory work, um, but this is going to be just one individual's approach, okay? Um, I, I always like to say this is uh, kind of a UPG warning here on the channel. What I say is just quite often my take on things. I like to pull from the historical side of things, but I am not what you would call a hardcore recon heathen. And I'm also not just an eclectic type pagan. I have a, I have a specific focus in how I do my practices, but I will, uh, you know, be a bit more open to incorporating other things that best suit my practice. Okay, it's it's how I have fit into uh, this modern world, uh, trying to follow old ways. So big disclaimer. There you go. Um, now, in terms of using runes for magic um, or any other sort of divinatory work. I did mention before in other videos that, you know, for what we know from the historical side of things that, you know, how the runes were used, if the runes were used, um, is a bit sketchy from historical aspects to say the least. Um, it's pretty safe to say that runes were used for magical work um, from some of the Icelandic sagas and from other historical um, uh, people like Tacitus. Um, Germania, you know, he, he documents or, or, you know, puts down in writing things that he saw or was at least 
told about um, of how the Germanic peoples used uh, that of casting of lots. Um, but again, we don't know for sure whether were those runes carved into things or all that kind of fun stuff. So uh, suffice it to say, runes are used nowadays uh, for many things, for, for magical workings. And how everybody works with the runes is going to kind of depend on the type of pagan that you are. And it's also going to depend on um, what you're most comfortable with. Some people can become a bit intimidated by the runes, and um, I would definitely say that you should use caution when working with the runes, and you should not force yourself to work with the runes. Don't think that you're being a lesser pagan or not a good heathen or anything like that just because you don't feel interested or wanting to work with runes uh, in any shape or form. It's uh, definitely not a requirement to be a pagan. Um, as, as, a, as a matter of fact, I think that stuff like this should be focused on by specific people within your societies, within your communities. Um, not everybody should be dabbling in this sort of stuff. If you are, great. If, if you're not, great too. Like I'm saying, there's no right or wrong uh, as far as that goes. Um, but definitely don't feel like you have to, you know, just to be a pagan uh, within the Norse uh, view of things, okay? So I'm going to now focus on my altar space and show you guys just kind of how I would do a rune casting and also talk a little bit about some of the things that I see other people do that I don't necessarily do and why that is. So without further ado, let me show you how I read the runes. Wow. Okay, folks, here we are. Um, this is my altar space, okay, um, more or less. I may have things rearranged a little bit differently, but for the sake of the video and for the sake of the demonstration, I am going to be showing you where, you know, so this would be like my rune casting surface, even though it's kind of small in comparison to how many runes we would have. This is, again, just kind of like a, a basic uh, run through of how I would read runes, okay? You'll notice that I have candles lit. This is an, uh, an accurate uh, depiction of usually what I like to have when it comes to uh, the elements nearby. There's either going to be some water or there's going to be fire um, for the most part. I like the use of fire because I think that it's the most primal I and mean, I like the energy that it carries off in terms of sending um, and, and, and carrying you know, the intent out into uh, the sacred, um, which is when we're or when I'm working with the runes, these are the things that I'm doing. So, I've shown you my rune set before, uh, but I'm going to show everybody again. So this is my rune box. Um, I'm going to leave a link down in the description of the video to a great Facebook page uh, for you guys to check out. It's called Wicked Wood Burning. Um, so it's a shelf, uh, <laughs> saint, uh, I'll get it right here, shameless self-promotion. There we go. Um, my wife, pretty much does most of the stuff that you'll see in terms of wood burning crafts um, on that page. I do obviously the rune sets that you've seen by now on my channel and on the Facebook page. Um, but this is an example of, of a box that you can order from Wicked Wood Burning. So head down to the description, click the link to the Facebook page, uh, check and see what is available over there. There's a lot of other stuff that's not just Norse heathen related, right? There's some really other cool things that she's done. Uh, that she's done. Um, and uh, that are available for sale. So anyway, this is my uh, rune box that she made for me, and these are my runes. They're very simple. Um, there's nothing elaborate about them. They're just kind of like a, a basic smooth stone. Um, but they were a gift to me, and, and, and the gifts mean the most, okay? Um, so again, uh, just for the sake of the video um, and, and for arguments, I favor a rune casting method. Um, some folks like to, uh, you know, like lay runes out, draw random runes and, you know, without looking and seeing and, and what, uh, you know, what the runes that they pick show up and then they'll kind of read the meanings of the runes or what, you know, kind of like in a spread. And I, and I think that that is a very, out of all the ways of, you know, reading the runes, I think that tends to be a more modern approach, um, especially given the fact that it's like tarot cards are, are, are spread out, you know, so it's almost like a uh, mirroring the, the same method for tarot. Um, and uh, so I will cast, okay, 
I and I do three casts um, at a time. So I will grab a handful of runes without looking, you know, just re just reach in and grab however many, and then on the surface of, or the space that I would that I would uh, be working on. In this case, it's you know kind of a small area, but you know the, the runes are cast. Now um, I'll zoom in just a tad bit for you. Hopefully you can see a little bit better. Um, the way I do it is whatever runes are um, facing up. Um, I'll take notice of those first and also see kind of what runes are close to one another. So obviously this rune, Yera, is close to some other, you know, some other runes that fell nearby, but they're concealed. Um, uh, they're not being shown right now. Sowilu is a kind of center and we have two others that are off to the side. So my rune casting method, and again, I don't know what anybody else does if they do this, but my rune casting method is kind of like a past, present, future thing um, to as a, as a nod to the Norns, the Nornir, uh, who sit at the roots of Yggdrasil weaving the webs um, for, for, for the gods and for man. You know, so I will do the first cast as the um, uh, Urd cast for the past, things that have already happened, things that have kind of shaped what is now the Verdandi, and then after when I do my second cast it would be that of Verdandi. Uh, which is the now, the things to be focused on now, and then the final cast would be uh, for the Skuld, or for the what what could be, what should be, what shall be. Um, the, the things that are happening now will shape the future. Um, so as an example, you know, um, depending on what the purpose of the casting was, I would look to see, okay, well, Yera is revealed and Solu is revealed. These are good, uh, you know, the, the, the Sun uh, rune and the Harvest rune. You know, so we have, you know, we have success, we have, you know, right um, things happening in their right and proper time, reaching a harvest, reaching the end of a goal, you know, um, reaping the rewards of things. And then we see runes that are um, concealed. Now, when I say concealed, I'm saying that they are face down. Um, I will, again, look to the runes that are showing up bright first, and then read the runes closest to those um, and, and find out what they are. And you'll notice, um, or I'll show you guys in a minute, you know, those two runes that appear, um, and then we have Algis uh, that appears next to it. So these runes are, that are surrounding Yera, um, I would read those runes um, kind of as like a, things that were not quite as prevalent. You know, things that were maybe hidden or not revealed right away um, in that time. Um, and what I also do, or what I have to say that I also don't do, is, um, you know, let's say I were to reveal a rune and it was, you know, Thurisas, which for, for everybody that may not know, you know, the, the rune of, the, of, of uh, Thorn, Thurs, looks like this. You know, so the runes may fall and they may, you know, be facing this way, they may be facing that way, they may be not looking like that rune. So let's say, you know, I was to pick that rune up and it's, you know, facing that way. Um, what I don't do um, which you may hear of other people doing in their rune readings or rune practices uh, is to read the runes reversed or what's called Merkstav. I don't do that um, and the reason for that for me is um, you know the, the runes at, 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 at the very least or at the very basic of things the runes are an alphabet they are a system of writing you know so to have you know, to read the runes, uh, just because the Thurs rune is upside down does not change the value of this character. Doesn't change, sorry, it doesn't change the value of what this character represents. It would be like if I was to look at the letter A, B, C, or D, um, and if they're upside down or reversed or whatever, it doesn't change what the value of those characters mean to me uh, or to anybody. So Thurs, Thurisas, whatever you want to call it, still means what it means, um, whether it's down, sideways, backwards, whatever, it still means what it means to me um, from, from my knowledge of the rune. So I don't worry about whether the rune's facing upright, downwards, backwards, whatever. I read the runes uh, for what they are. Now other people might, and again, there's no, nothing to say that it's right or wrong, it's just that's how I do it. Um, I also We'll do things like a single rune draw. Um, if I zoom back out just a tad more, 
You know, I may do a daily rune draw. You know, just disturb the runes a bit. And, you know, without looking, pick a rune. And I've talked about this before. And, you know, whatever that rune is, you know, Isa is, is, is the rune of isolation, uh, um, uh, staying still, uh, stagnation, um, looking inward, you know, focusing on yourself, the ego. Um, you know, so that would be my rune draw of the day, and then if I was to, you know, pull that, that would be what I think, you know, just a single rune draw. A lot of people do that, a lot of pagans will do that. Um, they may ask a question, they may have something on their mind particularly, and they'll draw a rune to say, okay, well, what should I, you know, what action should I take, if there's any action I should take, stuff like that. So, um, again, I don't do, I don't do these, you know, rune spreads, okay, I don't, you know, just grab random runes and do a spread with them, you know, uh, in any way, shape, or form. I've, I've done it in the past. It doesn't really feel like when I was, you know, first learning uh, about the runes. Um, it wasn't something that really just felt natural to me. And the thing with, with me and working with the runes is it, it feels natural and they are organic and they are of nature, you know. So this is... Uh, all the values that these characters have come from from nature so the, the flow of things should be natural which is, which is why I just cast okay that's why when I do what I do it's just throw them out let them land how they will and read them uh, from there so again how everybody else does their rune castings or rune draws or rune spreads whether they read the Merc stuff whether they you know whatever you're gonna you're gonna find a lot of information out there about the runes and uh, you know different uh, people's insights on them so um, my, my, my best I guess advice if you want to call it such my, my best suggestion is you know find what works best for you spend time uh, studying the runes don't force yourself into um, you know trying to learn it if it doesn't feel natural and if it doesn't feel like something that you want to do and, and be careful of your of your sources um i've talked in other videos uh about some good uh rune study sources um but the, the best thing to do is is to uh just get your hands in there and actually do it um another thing that some people might do that you'll hear about is blooding their runes i did a video um, which i will also link up here in the corner um, about the power of blood and why um, one would want to do that um, in terms of using blood in their ritual especially when it comes to their to their runes um, I did blood my runes when I decided that I wanted to pursue this path of spirituality um, to the ex to this extent um, that of being a Vitki and, and, and actually you know working with the runes on a very regular basis um, so you know my life energy is, is tied to them and this is this is my set you know I don't um, I would never give this set away. I would never leave these are mine. When when I'm done using them, they will be done. They will go with me. They will be buried. They will be destroyed. They will be somehow sent off into the sacred um, when I'm no longer here. So they, there's that. Um, so anyways, everybody, that is, uh, again, hopefully a, a, a bit clearer insight of my runic practices. Maybe it's helped you in your runic practices and in what you want to do in terms of pursuing working with the runes and um, you know learning about them and, and incorporating them into your spiritual practices so thank you guys for watching I'm going to go ahead and jump back up to a regular view and sign off so thank you guys for watching stick around all right everyone well there you have it nothing very elaborate nothing very exciting um, but again hopefully it's it's helped some folks just kind of see an insight of how I would do a rune casting, how maybe you want to do a rune casting. Again, it has to be natural to you and it has to be something that works well for you. Don't force it. If it if it feels wrong, if it doesn't feel like it flows in any way, if it just if it, if it feels wrong, it, it, it's just it's wrong for you in that case, you know? So go with your gut, go with what your heart feels. Um, don't force it. Let it just be something that naturally takes its course. And um, enjoy the ride it's a, it's a very intense and long and uh, profitable uh, venture into into learning the runes um, but it comes with a it comes at a cost and it comes at a price just like how 
Odin, you know, sacrifices himself to himself. Uh, in the Hovamal, we hear of him hanging on the world tree Yggdrasil for nine nights, um, and then screaming, he falls and discovers the runes. And so there's a price to pay. There, there's a sacrifice to be given. And um, whatever that sacrifice is for you, it's it's yours. What, what mine was was mine, and what others are are theirs. So. I hope this video has been a bit helpful, somewhat educational, maybe interesting. If you guys liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumbs down, it's okay. Give me some constructive feedback down in the comments section. Let me know what you all thought of it. And if you want to share with me your runic practices and how you work with the runes, I'm sure myself, I can say for myself, I would love to hear it. And I think everybody else watching, reading the comments would love to hear it as well. Thank you all again so much for your constant support. Hail, and I'll see you all in next week's video.